Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Faculty Factory podcast. On today's episode, I thought I would go over leadership competencies. We all want to be leaders without recognizing that we already are leaders by virtue of being a faculty member in academic medicine. You may not have a what you think is a lofty title, and yet you are an, a faculty member. And so unbeknownst to you, maybe you're not realizing you already are a leader just by virtue of the job you do. So let's be in this present moment, think about our leadership style right now where we are to be better leaders to our patients, to our learners, for our colleagues, for our supervisors, um, for anyone else in, in leadership, how can we exemplify and embody good leadership? So I thought I'd share with you our Johns Hopkins medicine leadership competencies. And I don't really know um, who I can credit with developing this really nice matrix. I think there are 12 competencies that we we have in our in this matrix here that someone put together. I think it's maybe someone in organization development. But they did a really good job of identifying the leadership competency. And then in the grid, it puts you at either a first-line supervisor, a mid-level manager, a senior manager, and functional leader, and then an executive leader. So there are four categories in the columns, first-line, mid-level, senior, and executive. And then in the rows, there are certain behaviors you want to um, I, that you identify with having this certain competency. And then inter, dis, descriptive interview questions, behavioral interview questions that would get us at finding someone who has this competency. Then in these in this grid here at Hopkins, we have learning activities around each competency, and then a list of resources of books and courses and instructors who would help us identify that particular um, content around that competency. So I just thought I'd briefly kind of run through these and give you pause for thought. And rather than just reading everything to you, I thought maybe I could start with start with maybe just reading off a couple of those descriptive interview questions because those questions would maybe help you figure out if you are, you know, pretty good at this competency or if you might look at this as an opportunity to delve into it more at your local institution, your office of faculty affairs, office of faculty development, organizational development, whatever center in your institution offers this kind of content, you might want to check it out. But let me read to you the list of competencies, and there are 12 of them. Leadership competence, Johns Hopkins University, establishing relationships, developing talent, inspiring and motivating others, demonstrating emotional intelligence, acting with integrity, acting strategically, managing risk, navigating organizations, communicating effectively, promoting diversity and inclusion, setting a strategic vision, and holding self and others accountable. So those are the leadership competencies here at Hopkins. And I'm just going to like zip through this matrix here that I'm looking at. If you if you want to see this matrix, you just email me at kskorupski at jhmi. Edu. But you can also find this episode on facultyfactory.org. It's a great website with lots of resources, including links to the YouTube channel with lots of podcasts over the almost five years we've been doing this podcast, thanks to you. So here we go. It's, I'm going to start with the first competency, establishing relationships. Let me tell you what we think that competency is. Builds effective networks, working relationships, and alliances with a broad range of stakeholders, both internal and external, in order to collaborate effectively within divisions and across boundaries. Can relate to all kinds of people, regardless of background. Find topics and common interests that they can use to build rapport with others. So some of the questions if you're on a job interview or if you're being sought out for a leadership position in your institution, some behavioral interview questions you might come across as say, I'll, I'll read a couple in the mid-level manager range for establishing relationships. Give an example of how you work constructively with peers to solve a major problem. 
Tell us about the most difficult challenge you faced in trying to work cooperatively with someone who did not share the same ideas. What was your role in achieving this? And maybe one or two questions under the senior managers and functional leader category. Sometimes building good relationships at work doesn't always work. Tell me about a time when you were not able to build a successful relationship with others. And how about the most difficult situation you had when leading a department? What happened and what did you do? Were you ever in a position where you had to give feedback to someone who was in a position of authority? So again, that's around establishing relationships. Number two, developing talent. The definition provides guidance and feedback to help others strengthen their knowledge or skills that are needed to complete tasks, solve problems, and perform effectively. Guides and supports the professional development of individuals so that they can fulfill future job role responsibilities, define career goals, and establish development plans to achieve them. Gives people constructive developmental feedback and advice invests time and resources into building the capabilities of team members. So developing talent. How about a question at a mid-level range? Describe a situation where you have used stretch work that did not get the results you desired. What would you do differently? How do you learn about the aspirations and career goals of your staff? How frequently does this happen? Describe a result that you're most proud of. How do you approach delegation? Now for senior manager functional leaders, what have you done to encourage managers to accept developmental moves? What's been your biggest mistake in developing talent within your group? What happened? How did you deal with it? Competency number three, inspiring and motivating others. Definition, fosters commitment and cohesiveness by motivating, guiding, and facilitating cooperation within the organization toward goal accomplishments can persuade others, build consensus, and ensure cooperation from others to gain genuine acceptance for ideas and accomplish win-win solutions. Emphasizes the importance of people's contributions, lets staff know why their work is important and how it will benefit themselves and others, ties work activities to people's personal career goals and life interests. Inspiring and motivating others. Question, mid-level manager. Tell me how you solicit input from members of your staff on work initiatives. What did you do to share ownership and visibility? Describe a situation when you were able to have a positive influence on the actions of others. What did you do to get people to work at their peak potential? Senior managing and functional leadership category. Describe a time you effectively delegated assignments to others who were empowered to make decisions about how the work would be done. What happened? What was the outcome? Have you ever had a staff member whose performance was consistently marginal? What did you do? Have you ever adjusted your style when it was not meeting the objectives and or the people were not responding well? What happened? What was the outcome? Leadership competency number four, demonstrating emotional intelligence. Definition, exercises self-leadership, self-awareness, and self-regulation. Manages emotions so that they are expressed appropriately leads others by showcasing adaptability, empathy, and social skills. At a mid-level manager question range, describe a past experience that required you to relate well to all levels in the organization. How recently was this? How frequently does this happen? Give me an example when you had to produce results without sufficient guidelines. Describe a time where you had to use conflict management skills. What did you do and what were the results? Questions for senior managers and functional leaders. These are, you know, these are folks like directors, administrators, department chairs. Describe a time when you took personal accountability for a conflict and initiated contact with the individual involved to explain your actions. Have you ever dealt with a situation where there was a lack of trust? How did you handle the situation and what was your role? Describe a situation in which you were able to effectively read others and guide your actions by your understanding of their nonverbal cues. What did you do? What was the outcome? Leadership competency number five, acting with integrity. Definition, interacts with others in a way that is seen as direct and truthful, ensures confidence in individual and organizational motives and representations 
acts in a way that is consistent with personal and organizational values by keeping confidences, promises, and commitments, clearly states goals and beliefs, informs people of their true intentions, does what they say they will do, follows through on commitments, integrity. Give an example of a time when you provided immediate, direct, complete, and actionable feedback to a direct report. What happened? What were the results? When do you give positive feedback to people? Tell me about the last time you did and give me an example of how you handled the need for constructive criticism with a subordinate or a peer. Tell me about a time when you had to work through adversity while holding yourself and others accountable. And then for senior managers and functional leaders, describe a time that you demonstrated integrity by honoring commitments and promises. Tell me about a time when someone at work took inappropriate credit for work that was not theirs. What did you do? What was the result? Johns Hopkins University Leadership Competency number six, acting strategically. Definition makes long range plans by formulating business objectives and setting priorities which support organizational change in light of internal and external trends. Aligns day to day activities around broader organizational goals and objectives. Prioritizes resources based on the strategic objectives of the organization. Recognizes and rewards staff based on how their actions support the broader needs of the organization. So some questions you may be asked or you might want to consider. Tell me about a planning session you led that addressed long-term and tactical planning. How recent was this? How did you use the outcomes of that planning session? Describe what approach you have used with the group to discuss future consequences and trends regarding work issues. Describe how you go about obtaining broad knowledge and perspective of your professional field. Some higher level behavioral interview or descriptive questions. Describe how you would address the major components of a strategic plan. Talk about a time the strategic plan did not achieve the results you desired. What would you have done differently to get the desired outcomes? Tell me how you have delegated assignments for a strategic plan. How did you monitor the progress? What, if anything, would you have done differently? And then tell me about a time when you anticipated the future and made changes to current responsibilities or operations to meet future needs. All right, moving on to leadership competency number seven, managing risk. Stands alone and speaks out in defense of personal principles, weighs the risk required to accomplish substantially beneficial results while acknowledging the possibility of significant negative consequences. Effectively balances risks and opportunities, thinks through potential positive and negative outcomes, looks for ways to mitigate risks. Tell me about a time that you handled a difficult issue that involved personal risk, but was judged to be advantageous to the department. What did you do? What happened? Tell me about a time when you initiated the discussion of a sensitive topic and created an open, safe environment for others to join in the discussion. What were the results? And describe a situation where you fostered a highly motivated and productive work environment during times of change. COVID would probably be a great example. And then senior managers and functional leaders. Describe a time when you were responsible for making a major organizational change that had both positive and negative results on those impacted. What did you do? What was the outcome? Talk about a time when you took a different position on an issue than your boss. How did you manage it? What, if anything, would you have done differently? Or how about describe a time when you promoted innovation and encouraged your department to try new things without fear of reprisal? Leadership competency number eight, navigating organizations. Definition, understands the capability, ability, and potential results of internal and external stakeholders, as well as politics on organizational functioning and success. Understands the value and ability of internal and external stakeholders, as well as the effect of culture and politics on organizational function. Understands how work gets done in organizations, 
builds networks that allow them to efficiently drive projects through the organizational structure, maximizes productivity while staying within constraints of formal organizational policies and rules. My friend and colleague, Dr. Rachel Levine, has a great course on um, a seminar, actually, workshop seminar on um, navigating organizations and political organizational savvy. It's really good. Anyway, mid-level manager questions. Describe a time when you have used an informal channel versus a formal one to get a task done. Tell me about a time that you dealt persuasively with upper management and were successful in getting their support. What steps did you take? What was the outcome? Talk about a time when you were able to get things done in a totally different area from yours. What role did you play? How recent was this and what results did you achieve? A, little senior, a higher senior level um, set of questions. Tell me about a time when you maneuvered through several units that operated in silos to achieve a common goal. Describe what steps you take to learn about people, issues, and organizational dynamics in an organization. Talk about the most recent time you did this. Describe a time when you identified certain organizational landmines in a particular area. What did you do and what were the results? I hope you're catching that theme there, that like, what did you do? What were the results? Kind of goes in line with PARS. You may have heard about PARS, problem, action, result. The what did you do would be the action. What were the results? The results. So describing a problem, identifying the action, and then talking about the results. PAR. It's a nice way to tell your story when you're thinking about how you might answer some of these questions. I think we're on leadership competency nine, communicating effectively. Speaks and writes clearly, conveys information in a concise, organized, and logical manner. Is adept at tailoring the message to fit the interests and needs of the audience. Listens attentively and exercises tact, discretion, and diplomacy when interacting with members of the organization and stakeholders. What do you do to keep stakeholders, for example, staff, customers, other units, informed of important decisions concerning work situations? How frequently does this occur? Talk about a time when you intended to send a message to inform and persuade certain audiences to take action, and it did not work as you intended. What did you do? What happened? Describe the largest audience you have presented to and what you did to command attention and manage the group process. Now, on to senior managing and functional leader questions. Give an example of an opportunity you recently had to address an audience outside the organization. How did it go? What would you do differently? Describe a time when you had to adapt to the needs of a diverse audience on a complex topic. Tell me about a time when you demonstrated the ability to recognize when others were having difficulty understanding your message and you had to adapt your approach. I think I like this one and I'm thinking that it's kind of a maybe a no-brainer than some of us may skip through this going, well, I know how to communicate. I'm, I give talks all the time. I write papers and grants. But that last question, you know, let me repeat that's the segment that I was thinking. when. When you gauge that others are having difficulty understanding your message, or maybe your audience is different from you thought or prepared for, and you have to pivot, that's good communication. Is not just jumping up to a podium or getting on a Zoom and zipping through your, your slides without understanding the intention. Like, What is the intention? You intend to communicate this, this theory or this principle or these data results or this practice pattern, but the impact is actually different. How do you have the capacity to read that and then pivot? That's communicating effectively. And now I think we're on 10, leadership competency number 10, promoting diversity and inclusion. Treats all people with dignity and respect by being fair and consistent. Demonstrates an open-minded approach to understanding people regardless of their gender, age, race, national origin, religion, ethnicity, disability status, or other characteristics. Challenges bias and intolerance. Develops all inclusive groups and the realms of social interaction and communication. Shows respect for beliefs and traditions of others. Encourages and promotes practices that support cultural diversity. Discourages behaviors or practices that may be perceived as unfair, biased, or critical toward people with certain backgrounds. I love reading this because I always remind our faculty in our courses that this document is at least five years old. So it's a little bit ahead of all the uh, more recent um, diversity, equity, inclusion 
efforts, which are super important, but I, it's nice to see that many of our institutions were kind of way ahead of this. So some questions. Describe what steps you have taken to support, encourage open discussions regarding diversity and inclusion within your work area. Tell me about a time when you have proactively worked with the diversity program to develop and implement effective recruitment, retention, leadership, promotion, any kind of program that increased diversity and improved organizational performance. What did you do? Talk about the results. Talk about a time that you implemented a program, any kind of program or training, to promote the understanding of and appreciation of differences. Senior managers and functional leaders, tell us about how you hold others accountable for ensuring equality and diversity. What role do you play? How often do you do this? Tell me about a time when you assured that systems were in place to have reasonable accommodations for individual differences to ensure the full potential of persons with disabilities. Tell me about a time when you developed goals and plans for recruiting, selecting, developing, retaining a diverse, high-quality workforce. What happened? Johns Hopkins University Leadership Competency number 11, setting a strategic vision acts as a catalyst for organizational change by building a shared vision with others, which ensures alignment of the organization's vision, strategic plan, mission, and values, influences others to translate vision into action, identifies and articulates the strategic goals and direction of the organization, division, or group, and establishes connections between short-term goals and long-term goals. Mid-level managers, Describe how you have contributed to the strategic planning process. What input did you provide? How was the input used? Tell me about a time you created milestones and symbols, but were unsuccessful in creating support behind the vision. What happened? What did you learn? Describe a time when your actions and words inspired and motivated an entire work group. What was the situation? What were the results? Senior managers and functional leaders. Tell me about a time you used information from program, financial, and performance measures in strategic thinking and planning. What steps did you use? What were the results? Describe a time when you successfully inspired others inside and outside your department to establish a shared vision. What was the situation? What did you do and what was the outcome? Hey, you're hearing a lot about what what did you do, right? What did you do? So it sounds like leaders do things, right? We take action and then we document our results, what happened. And then the final leadership competency here at Johns Hopkins is holding self and others accountable. Definition, sets clear performance expectations and objectives for self and others, evaluates work performance and provides feedback to others, recommends proper training and coaching when appropriate, ensures recognition for positive results and takes corrective actions to resolve performance problems as appropriate. Describe the steps that you've taken to define and communicate performance expectations to your employees. What were the steps? What was the outcome? Describe a time that you have delegated tasks and special projects to match the knowledge, skills, and experience of your staff. What was the situation? What did you do? What was the result? Senior managers and functional leaders, give us a specific example of how you have empowered your staff to make independent decisions. What did you do? What was the outcome? I like this one as well, holding self and others accountable, just because of what popped in my head was matching that question of tell us a time when you matched the knowledge, skills, and experiences of your staff to a project. That's why it's so important with the emotional intelligence intelligence, um, framework that Daniel Goldman proposed way back when, that emotional intelligence, different from in IQ, this is EQ, is that knowledge of self leads to better management of self and then knowing, which will then lead you to knowing others better and then managing those relationships better. So I'll say there's like four four quadrants here. Knowing myself, then I can better manage myself, knowing others so I can better manage those relationships. And that is so helpful when you intend to match your staff's knowledge, skills, attitudes, behaviors with appropriate jobs. That entails you having to get to know them, understanding their strengths, and then giving them some stretch projects that they want to develop to grow their own capacity in your division or your department or your office. So lots to learn here. I I think we're going to do another episode on emotional intelligence, and I hope you check that out as well. 
and hope this was helpful to you. Reach out if you have any questions and certainly reach out if you'd love to be on the Faculty Factory podcast and share some wisdom or exciting news from your area. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's your podcast producer, Casey. And I just wanted to let you know that as of September 1st, 2023, this podcast has had nearly 76,000 total downloads and YouTube views from listeners in 84 different countries. On the Faculty Factory website, facultyfactory.org has drawn nearly 40,000 web visits from users in 122 different countries. It's truly an international platform, and we would love to invite you, no matter where you are, to be a guest on this show. Our host, Dr. Skrupski, makes the experience very engaging, relaxing, and it's all recorded on Zoom. So no matter where you are, we would love to have you join her for an episode. As producer, I'll make any edits that you'd like, so there's no pressure to nail it on the first go or anything like that. We just want to hear from different faculty around the world so we can learn from each other. Reach out if you'd like to be a guest. You can contact us on facultyfactory.org slash contact, or you can email Dr. Skorupski directly at kskorupski at jhmi.edu. Thanks for tuning in to Faculty Factory Podcast. The mission of the Faculty Factory is to build and support a community of leaders in faculty development who share tools, resources, wisdom, and encouragement in service to our faculty members, schools, and institutions. We encourage you to go to facultyfactory.org to find out more, get in touch with me, ask me any questions. Maybe you want to be interviewed on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Faculty Factory Podcast. We'll see you next time. The Faculty Factory podcast and website is sponsored by the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine Office of Faculty. For more information, visit facultyfactory.org.